Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with a blog to watch. And today I'm doing a special interview with Mr. Guido Torini, the CEO of Parmigiani. Guido, welcome. Hello. It's so good to be speaking to you today. I'm really excited about chatting about the new Parmigiani PF watches. I have a lovely assortment here, especially one on my wrist. This is the, the micro rotor, the, the entry level model, but it's really, really nice. Talk a little bit about you coming into the Parmigiani brand. You're the new leader there. What is your overall goal with the brand? And talk a little bit about what the brand represents to you. Well, I entered a year ago uh, in January last year. And um, the brand, uh, I knew it from 20 years before. So the, the, perfection, the perception that I have of the brand was extremely prestigious and extremely rare in, in the style and in, the, in, in its perception. Uh, when I entered, uh, it was confirmed uh, and, uh, and I, I understood better the, the flavor. Uh, and the, the the values that are that are inside, which are extremely um, noble in my opinion, because they are rooted into restoration, and they are rooted into understatement. So great craft, great knowledge, but also a style which is uh, discreet. And uh, these two um, elements, to me, are the foundation of the brand, uh, and they come from the founder, from Michel Parmigiani himself. Uh, that, that embodies, if you want, these, uh, these values uh, in his whole life. And I never met him before, so I met him in the first day that I joined. And this comforted me because um, it, uh, the imprinting of the brand uh, that he gave is something extremely interesting to develop and to make it contemporary for, uh, for a customer of today. And that's the goal that we have. Not a lot of brands that are named after a person have that founder still alive, but with Parmigiani, you do. And I want to speak a little bit more about Michel Parmigiani because he is a very interesting person. Talk a little bit about who he is and describe some of his values a little bit more, just so people have a better understanding of what some of the visuals and the technology and the watches mean to him. Well, I have no other way of describing Michel as a living legend of uh, restoration. So to me, this means a lot because uh, restoration is an art and it is an art that uh, is not very well known in the industry because the industry has become very big and very important economically. Um, but this uh, uh, restoration business, which is not really a business, it's, it's an art, as, as I said, uh, is much more cultural, is much more deep, uh, deeply rooted into the watchmaking skills of watchmaking. So he is an independent mind. I, in the, when he was 25 in 1975, when everybody was going quartz, uh, he decided to devote his life to perpetuating mechanical art that was disappearing. And it's something that now it seems obvious. No, but imagine yourself at 25 years old uh, in a world that is going in a direction that you don't understand and you, you see what could be lost and, and you say, no, I'm going in a different way. So this, this gives you a, a great feeling of confidence uh, of, uh, of uh, setting your own path. And that's uh, extremely important in a brand that is independent. And this, this route is coupled with two elements that are extremely noble. The first is the knowledge of uh, watchmaking. I always say that uh, restoration is like having a black belt of watchmaking. Uh, it's, it's the highest uh, knowledge because it's not only a technical knowledge of an execution of a craft of today, but it is knowledge that goes back uh, the whole history of watchmaking. Michel has restored hundreds and hundreds of watches of the Patek Philippe Museum, of the Family Foundation collection, which is incredibly valuable. And they go back to the 17th, 16th century. And, um, and uh, you have to master all the techniques of the whole history. And not only in the movement, but also in the um, in the aviage, in the in dials and cases and and chains and anything that was uh, on a timepiece throughout centuries. And uh, the other element, which is extremely important in restoration, is modesty, is understatement, is uh, disappearing from your work. So you have this huge craft, and it doesn't have to appear because you're restoring another person's work and it's the other person's work that has to uh, give it, get back to, to life. Uh, and this is a, a tension which is uh, incredible because you need to be very humble. Although he doesn't have anything to be humble about, but he's the most humble person I know. And these, these values 
of competence, of her cultural heritage, and understatement and discretion are the foundation of the brand that he, that he started uh, 25 years ago. I can certainly attest to the fact that watch restorers are today's best watchmakers. Not only do they get to investigate how dozens and dozens of different me mechanisms work, but they're able to compare and contrast all different types of designs from masters of yesterday. Um, you and I know this, but I love to remind people that watch restorers make the best people to create new watches. And when you look at Parmigiani watches, what you realize is that Michelle Parmigiani is inspired by the larger universe as you said, the entire history of watches, and he's able to pick and choose those themes and those concepts that appeal to him the most. Design and, and distinctiveness is, of course, very important to him. And all the watches we're going to talk about today are this the PF case shape. Talk a little bit about this shape. Where does it come from? And what are some of the visual elements in these watches that you think people really need to notice? Uh, when I entered, I, I felt the need to reassess the brand identity, the style of the brand, and to clarify it in a way which, uh, which is unmistakably Parmigiani, and that's the work that we did on the Tonda PF. The Tonda PF has elements of style which are going back to an origin, if you want, of purity, of uh, essential design, which is almost minimal, because if you look at the watch, uh, you will notice immediately uh, its openness in the dial, the absence of the writing of Parmigiani Fleurier on the dial, uh, the choices that are extremely subtle, uh, details that you don't see at first because it's not an obvious uh, object, but the style has to be fresh, contemporary. So it's a bit of a tension between uh, minimal style, but an extremely excellent refinement in the making of the style, uh, because all the elements that make the, 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 the details where Parmigiani is known for, not to, to putting details on, on the timepiece, which are exquisite are done uh, with high skills. So the, the essence of the collection is probably the entry. So the Tonda PF micro rotor, which is a two hand watch with an ultra thin movement with a, a micro rotor in platinum, very thin, but it has all the, the elements of a contemporary watch. It's a sport chic uh, watch, which is extremely comfortable. And which every, every choice that we, we did from an aesthetic point of view, have the ambition to give uh, an emotion which is discreet, but which is interesting, which is not at first sight, which you discover by wearing. And it's not for the others, it's for the owner. That's why we took out the logo. And, and we use uh, and we, we, we dived into the aesthetic codes of the brand that were hidden in the assortment of the 25 years of existence. That's a lot of things to pack into one watch. And you're absolutely right. As you look at it, as you observe different angles, you notice a lot of details. And one of the things that I like the most are the small details. And when I say that, I mean the finishing, the very small angles in the case, the very subtle textures on the dial, all the really, really little things that a lot of watches, even other watches priced at Parmigiani level, sometimes miss out. And so the ability to look at these watches and to think that the people that designed them really made sure that every little angle and every little service you know, meets a certain standard is really obvious when you take a close look at it. So I, 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 I find that in just a couple of seconds of, of observing these models. Now, this is the entry level point here, the micro rotor, and it's really, really gorgeous. And then we move up to the chronograph, which is what I'm wearing right here, and a few other models. Talk about how in your mind, you took the Tonda PF from the simple two hand and extended it to the chronograph, the split second chronograph, and of course the annual calendar that all build around the core theme, but of course are for different types of customers. Talk about the collection. Well, if the micro rotor is the essence of the collection, it's the purest execution. If you do only one movement, one, uh, one model, you are not, uh, showcasing a style, you're showcasing a timepiece. So we, I wanted a, a collection built on the most iconic movements of the brand to celebrate the 25th anniversary because um, these four movements that we chose have been uh, very important to the brand. Some like the split second uh, chronograph, which is a manually winded uh, five hertz chronograph with a movement that is completely in gold. There are 36 grams of gold in the, in the bridges and the platine is probably the, to me, without modesty, it's the best chronograph in the world. And uh, uh, to the annual calendar, to the, to the chronograph five hertz with uh, another split second, which is 
uh, a beautiful movement um, to, to display a chronograph. So these four movements build up uh, a collection. And when you have a collection, uh, you are interpreting the style that we defined with the micro-rotor uh, at different levels of price point and at different levels of movements. Um, which express uh, different um, different emotions now because if the micro rotor is uh, probably the purest watch and from an aesthetic point of view it's the most versatile because you can wear it uh, swimming in the sea it has 100 meters water resistance but it can go also with a tuxedo so it's really uh, the, the most um, usable and versatile uh, execution. Uh, the chronograph, the, the annual calendar, and the platinum split second, the limited edition, uh, are the way to build an assortment and a collection uh, through different price points, through different movements for, for um, clients that want um, different different uh, emotions from a technical point of view, from a display of the time point of view. The annual calendar to me, it's extremely well balanced uh, with uh, very, very readable uh, information, although uh, complex because the dial is busy, but it's busy in a tidy way. Uh, and that's part of the essence of being pure. No, you have to always be able to look at the two hands when you're looking at the complication and uh, because that's what you read every time you look at the watch and then the other information of the date of the month of the year, they have to be uh, complementing it in a very harmonious way. No? So all these choices are for purists, are for people that are looking into uh, a way of uh, enjoying a timepiece, uh, which is extremely noble, in my opinion. It's not, uh, it's not how much you put on a watch, but it's the balance of all the elements that makes the beauty of it. One of the things I'm noticing is what a good job you do with the dials. There are a lot of information on some of these dials. And what you're able to do with even the, the two-hand uh, micro rotor is make them all very, very legible, especially in comparison to some of the already good watches from Parmigiani. What was it like when you were redoing the dials? You wanted to keep the core essence from your background. You really know how to make a strong, legible dial. What was some of the sort of Guido style that you incorporated into the world of Parmigiani, especially in the dials? Well, when the brand is born uh, from uh, the history that we are born, it's obvious that um, the richness of the details is an element of uh, distinction. But the richness of details, if they are um, done in a classic way, they tend to be Baroque. They tend to dive into a brand, um, brand mood, which is not very contemporary. Um, and uh, we wanted to preserve the, um, the DNA, you know, the, the soul of the brand through these beautiful finishings that are extremely rich and make them um, suited for a sports sheep watch of today, for, a, for what the customers of today are most uh, seeking for, which is uh, a little bit of um, less formality. You know? We're living in a world which is less formal than before. Uh, if you think of our grandfathers and you look at the pictures when they were going out uh, to dinner, most of them were wearing a tuxedo. You, you don't go out to dinner unless it's a formal occasion today with a tuxedo. So we are moving towards a more unconventional, uh, not a more conventional, a more um, informal way. So if you want, it's a way to be impeccably informal uh, that we're trying to, to address. So keeping these elements that are uh, of extreme rich, richness in the finishings and the details and making them contemporary was probably the biggest challenge because when you do a guilloche, you are in a world of uh, another century. You are in the brigades, you are in, 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 in timepieces that go back in history, also in the mood. So the, the, the recipe, if you want, of um, bringing up to date uh, a classic uh, technique like a guilloche was the size of the guilloche. So the design, first of all, had to be rooted in the brand and it's uh, the design of the Grand Arche that was always present in, in Michel Parmigiani's uh, work. And uh, by minimizing it at the maximum scale, uh, you make it become a texture that is not invasive to the eye when you look at the, the time. And you, the result 
you, it depends on the angle that you look at uh, the watch, no? because sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. And that's exactly the purpose, because you want to have a clean surface, because that's what is more interesting today uh, in, in, in what clients are looking for. But it's not a plain watch. It's not a plain, it's surface. It's, it's a texture. It's something that is interesting. No? And then I wanted a minute scale that was at the lower level than the Guilherme because I wanted to give a protagonist uh, position to the work that is on the dial and uh, and the minute scale is done in a different treatment so it's just a, a sunblasted finishing very very thin where the decalque whether the indication of the of the of the seconds or the minutes uh, is extremely readable you know? and uh, and this double surface with this clean readability on the same dial color, it's just the surface that gives the reflection of a light, this tone that you look at, uh, makes this emotion. And the indexes that are kept extremely small on purpose, because it's not something that opens up your dial. You're looking at, a, at, at, a, at an open uh, dial that you don't need anything else than two hands to read the time. So the indexes are just markers that help you out in this exercise. And they are across these two surfaces, so it becomes like a step you now to, to set an index, which is so fast, that's so polished, that reflects the light so powerfully, like a, like a mirror um, on two surfaces, makes a diff an interesting movement that uh, in, in a scale of one or two millimeters, that, that's where the design has, uh, the space, the room that design has to express itself on a watch, uh, you are, looking at an, an extraordinary complexity for a, for a result which is extremely immediate, which is extremely powerful. And the design, uh, the simplicity of the effect is what makes the longevity of the design. And the execution of that is extremely difficult to make, not for the sake of difficulty, but for, for the fact that we were looking for subtle um, emotions, no? so, so emotions that you don't see at first. And that's what makes it interesting. And I could go on on the case, on the bezel, on the movement, on the bracelet. The, every every element of this watch is 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 uh, is thought uh, to give this uh, feeling. It's really hard not to get excited while listening to you because I'm I'm noticing things. For example, the hour markers and the way the light plays with it, and it's it's absolutely packed full of wonderful details. And as we know, sometimes the measure of a high-end watch is the amount of work that goes into things that you don't see. And on that note, I want to have one final comment, and that is about the finishing. Parmigiani watches have beautiful movements. And they're very, very well finished, which means that they're polished and decorated very nicely. Talk a little bit about the effort and the culture at Parmigiani, specifically when it comes to finishing the movements. If you take the, the pinnacle of the collection, which is the split second chronograph, there you have um, an apotheosis uh, of emotions. First of all, the choice of material, because it's a gold movement. When you have 36 grams of gold in platinum bridges, you have sufficient material to, to express uh, and to reflect the light. Finishing have, have a double scope, and this is across all brands, but the way that you interpret the, the, the scope makes it different from brand to brand. And the way that you, you work on metal, the, the anglage, the chamferings that you do, uh, the sandblasting that you use, the, the, the way that you cut the bridges in order to to have an open work that makes you admire also the technical, the wheels, the pivots, the, the levers, everything that is in a complex movement like that, where you have two column wheels because it's a retrapant, it's a split second. So it's something really, really wonderful to look at. And that's where the expression of the philosophy of Michel, where he sees beauty in technique, you know, where technique for him is an aesthetic exercise. And that is why uh, this, period, this movement is, is the maximum expression of what, uh, of what aesthetic means uh, to him uh, on a chronograph. And if you look at it, that is even his signature in, um, because uh, when you do such a masterpiece, uh, it's, it's a nice thing to, to sign it. I couldn't agree more. The split second chronograph movement is among the most fantastic in the world. Um, 
really, really nothing else there like it. And the other movements that Parmigiani makes are, are really stunning. Um, I know that when people discover them, they're going to like it. Guido, thank you so much for talking about the Parmigiani Tonda PF collection. We talked about the micro rotor. We talked about the chronograph, the annual calendar, and of course the split second chronograph, wonderful watches. And you can see more on the Parmigiani website as well as the blog to watch.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone.